So how do you structure a project when you want to share UI components between apps? Maybe you also want to share configuration, linting rules, or a code formatting style. Well, you might have heard about this way of organizing a code base as a monorepo. In this video, I will describe what a monorepo is, and then I will try to explain the benefits of adopting this way of organizing projects. Finally, we will build the simplest monorepo containing a Vue.js application and the component library. I will also use Tailwind CSS to share a consistent style guide between the applications and Prettier and ESLint to configure automatic code formatting and linting rules. I will focus on the basic monorepo structure and tooling without going into more complex tools such as Lerna or TurboRepo, which you might not even need when you are just starting out. First, what is a monorepo? A monorepo is a way of organizing a code base containing multiple applications into a single repository. It has a bad connotation mainly because the name sounds a lot like a monolithic architecture and that also has a bad connotation nowadays. However, this has nothing to do with a monolithic architecture. In fact, architecture and deployment of the application can be decoupled from the structure of the code base. You are able to use a modular architecture such as microservices and also independently deploy the application within a monorepo. You will see that this way of organizing code makes more sense than the alternatives. Let's look at some benefits of monorepos. First, they facilitate code sharing and reuse without necessarily having to publish NPM packages. You can enforce linting rules and styling or other configuration across applications. It makes the onboarding and setup easier, usually by just having to clone a single repository and with a couple of commands and automations having the entire system up and running on your development machine. It also makes tracking changes in a code base and creating merge requests and feature branches much easier. Imagine you have to implement a specific business feature which requires changes in a bunch of repositories. Maybe it requires a database migration, backend changes, new components in a component library or new UI changes. If all of these are contained in separate repositories, you have to create branches and merge requests on each. These merge requests might depend on each other, for example, merging the backend changes without merging the database migration might leave your system in an undesirable state. With a monorepo, you can create a single branch and a single merge request to track all the changes required for a given feature. Lastly, this can scale to very large repositories with lots of applications thanks to specialized tools like Lerna or TurboRepo. So let's build a simple monorepo. We will use PMPM, a different package manager than the default NPM. You could also use Yarn or NPM. They all have support for something called workspaces, which is essentially the way you separate packages within a monorepo. Note that if you pick another package manager, the commands and the behavior might be different. So if you want to follow along, make sure you have pmpm installed. First, let's initialize a git repository. Run pmpm init and git init. And create a git ignore file and add the node modules folder to it. I will create a couple of folders in this repository, one I like to call at app where all the different applications are stored and one called packages where libraries and configurations are stored. Inside the at app folder, I will have a client application and a server. For our example, this is enough. In a more complex app, you might have separate folders for the application landing page that is maybe server side generated, maybe you'd have another one for database migrations and other stuff. Now let's tell pnpm that we are going to be using workspaces by creating the pnpm workspace yaml file. In it we define a couple of paths in which any folder we create will be interpreted as a standalone package. Let's create a hello world application using Vite, which is a faster alternative to Webpack. For this I'm doing nothing special, I'm just following the official documentation to generate application. So that would be pnpm create Vite in the current folder. Let's pick Vue.js and TypeScript and take a look at the generated files. 
First, in the package JSON, let's change the name of our application. In a monorepo, there is usually the convention to name packages with the add sign, followed by the name of the app and then slash the name of the package. In this case, let's name it at demo slash client. Next, let's look at the tsconfig file. We might want to reuse this file to enforce some settings across all packages in the monorepo. So let's move it to the root of our monorepo. Here we can keep only the common settings, then every other package will extend this config. TS configs have the capability by defining an extend property, which can take a path to another TS config. In the target config, you need to specify that it extends the root config. And in the root config, you have to specify that it is referenced by the target config. I will be running a few commands for our client app. So what I usually do is create a shortcut to the client script so that I don't have to keep writing dash dash filter at the demo slash client all the time. Next, let's move TypeScript as a top level dependency for our monorepo, since all our apps will use TypeScript and we want the version to stay consistent between them. This will probably cause a pure dependency error for PMPM. However, you can safely ignore this for now. I think there's also a logged issue on the PNPM GitHub page for this. When we install packages at the root level, PNPM asks for a confirmation that we didn't do this by mistake. So you need to add the W flag to the command. Okay, let's start enforcing linting and code formatting rules for our entire monorepo. For this, what I like to do is install a few packages at the root level. Let's install Prettier, ESLint, and a few ESLint plugins and custom configs. Let's go over them one by one and see what each does. First, the TypeScript ESLint plugin applies linting rules for TypeScript. The TypeScript ESLint parser has the ability for ESLint to lint TypeScript files. ESLint config Prettier removes ESLint rules that conflict with Prettier, letting Prettier handle those. ESLint plugin import ensure consistent import statements. ESLint plugin simple import sort, I really like this one, it automatically sorts import statements for us. This is basically my OCD. ESLint plugin view contains linting rules for Vue.js. And lastly, Prettier plugin Terwin CSS. Since we will be using Terwin CSS classes in our templates, this plugin for Prettier will allow it to automatically sort our CSS classes so that they remain consistent. This makes a big difference for the developer experience when using Terwin CSS. Now let's create our ESLint RC file at the root of our monorepo. I will just copy and paste this file and you will be able to find all of this in the GitHub repo in the description. Here we configure ESLint's plugin and extend the configs we just installed. We need an override for the .view files since they will be using the custom view ESLint parser instead of the TypeScript parser to be able to parse the view files and apply view specific rule sets. Next, let's create a prettier config again in the root of our monorepo. Here I just configure the Tailwind plugin and apply the few rules just for testing. Next, let's create a Tailwind CSS config that will be used by both our client application as well as our component library. For this we can create a local package under the packages folder. Let's name it tailwind-config. For it to be an installable package, it needs to have a package.json file. We need to pick a name for our package and this will be used to install it. We also add a few dependencies. So pmpm dash dash filter at demo slash tailwind config add and we need to install auto prefixer post CSS and tailwind CSS. Now let's configure these dependencies. Let's create a post CSS config CJS file and the tailwind config CJS file. They have the CJS extension because they are common JS modules that will be imported using the requires keyword. We need this because our project uses ES modules otherwise. Let me paste the configuration files for Tailwind CSS. I am doing nothing special here. This is what you would get if you would follow the instructions from the Tailwind CSS official docs. I only added a color to our theme, named it brand main, so that we can use it in all our projects. Now let's use this Tailwind CSS package in our client application. First we need to install it. When we install a package from the same monorepo as opposed to an external repository, we need to use the pnpm workspace protocol. So the command would look something like this. pnpm client add the name of our package, which is at demo slash tailwind dash config. 
followed by the add sign, the keyword workspace, and colon star, meaning the latest version, what is currently in the monorepo. Since we will not publish these packages, there is no reason to version them. Next, let's add the configuration files for Tailwind CSS and Pop CSS, just as they would be installed locally. However, they will not contain the configuration, instead they import it from our package that we created earlier. And finally, let's add the Tailwind CSS base styles to our style CSS file. Let's start the app in development mode. To see that Tailwind CSS is running, let me change the background color of the button in the Hello World component to our brand color. Also, we can observe that ESLint and Prettier work as expected. We can see that automatic import sorting is working. We can also see that we cannot place a different statement above an import statement. Let's add the Tailwind CSS class to our button that will target the MD breakpoint and color the text yellow. Hit save and the Tailwind CSS Prettier plugin does its jobs and sorts the classes accordingly. Let's say we decide to have semicolons in our code, so I change semi to true in the Prettier config.js file. Go back to our component, hit save, it automatically adds them for us. Great, everything's working as expected. Next, let's create the Vue.js component library that can be reused. I'll start by initializing a Vit app just as we did for the client. Let's rename it to addemo slash uilib in package.json. Copy and replace the TS config from the client as it is exactly the same. It just extends the base TS config. I'll use the generated gitignore file for the entire monorepo and remove it from the library and client. Next I'll copy over the tailwind config.cjs file. And post CSS config cjs. Let me create the shortcut command for the library in the root package JSON. And I'll add a few packages to the UI library. So we want to add our custom Tailwind package just as before. And we also need the Vite plugin DTS to generate TypeScript types for our components. In the Vite config, there will be some differences between the library and the client application. The library will be built differently. So let's first configure the DTS plugin we just installed. Next, we configure the build options. Here we tell it that the entry file to our library is src slash index.ts and that the format will be an ES module and give it a name. We also want to configure the rollup options. We use rollup to bundle our code together. Here we tell it that Vue.js is an external dependency so that it doesn't get bundled with the rest of our library. And we also tell it that the global view is imported from the view library. Next, we need to update some things in the package JSON as well. Here we tell it that the exported module is under the dist folder and the file name is ui-lib.js and that the TypeScript types will be in the dist folder in main.d.ts. We also tell it to export only the files in the dist directory. We need to change the dev script as well. For the dev script, we want to build the component library in watch mode. This will detect changes to files in our library and build it automatically. Let's do some cleanup and remove the auto-generated component. Copy the base Tailwind styles and replace the auto-generated styles. How I like to organize my components in the library is I make a folder for each component and this folder can also hold unit tests for the components or story files if you use Storybook. Let's create a component called my brand button. This will be a simple button component. 
it will take in a clock, which will basically be the text of our button and apply a few Tailwind CSS classes to the button. Let's have the background color be our brand main color. Add some extra stars to make it look a bit better. In the main TS file of the library, we need to remove almost everything. Just leave the style import there. And here we will add the export statements for each of our components so that they can be imported in independently. Okay, let me try to build the library. Run pnpm lib build. See, I have an error here. It seems that it cannot resolve the entry file index.ts. Well, this could be an issue due to relative paths, so let's try to resolve the entry file using the path.resolve method. Okay, seems that's not it. It seems that the file name is all wrong. It's main.ts, not index.ts. Let's try again. Okay, so the library seems to be built successfully. As you can see, it's about half a kilobyte of JS and about 30 kilobytes of styles. This would be the base Tailwind CSS styles. Yeah, that's not so bad. As you can see, the gzipped is about six kilobits. Okay, so you can see that all the build files that we are exporting were generated. Next, let's install this UI library to the client application. Let's remove some of the auto-generated template here and try to import our brand button component. Okay, I'm adding it to the template here. And let's try to run our app to see if the component shows up. And as you can see, the component is here and works great. Now, here is something really cool that monorepos allow you to do with ease. Imagine that you want to work on the UI library and the client application at the same time. We want our client to run in dev mode and we want the library to run in watch mode and build each time we change something in it, propagating the changes to the client immediately. For that, we can create a dev command in the root package JSON, which will run the dev commands on all our packages in the monorepo at once. So let's add the command. It's pnpm dash dash recursive dash dash parallel dash dash stream run dev. So this will run the dev command on all the packages recursively and in parallel and stream the output to the console. Now, since local modules are just sim linked folders, the library's dist folder, for example, updates automatically in the client's node modules folder. Let's try it out. Run pnpm dev. Open our application, and as you can see, the button component is still there. Now let's change something in the UI library. For example, let's change the button text color. Hit save, and you can see it updating live. And that's it. You now have a simple monorepo, and once you reach the scaling limits of PMPM workspaces, you might look into tools like TurboRepo, which offer features like caching and faster running of build commands, defining more complex workflow pipelines. They can also figure out what needs to be built based on changes and your project's dependency graph and other interesting features. In a future video, I will transform this monorepo so you would develop and deploy using Kubernetes. So subscribe for that.